Page number 20. Page number 20 this morning. Praise Him. Praise Him. Page number 20 this morning in your psalm books today. Page number 20. Page number 20. Page number 20 this morning. <clears throat> First verse. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing over this wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, eyes for angelly glory. Sing and honor, give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms He carries Him all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, take His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. This morning I will sing of my Redeemer, page number 42. Page number 42. Page number... Glenn Beller's supposed to be up here helping us. What's that? Glenn Beller. Glenn Beller's supposed to be up here to sing with us. All right. Anyway, just keep trying, keep trying. That's all I know. Page number 42. I will sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me. On the cross He suffered, from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer with His blood. 
You know, Philip Bliss wrote this song, and it was one of his last songs that he wrote because uh, he was killed in the train accident and uh, when the train went off the bridge into a, into a river and in his belongings this was one of the songs that he had wrote and so you never know folks um, and he thought he was going to his next destination but his next destination was heaven Amen. and I'm thankful they found this song in his belongings what we would have missed if we had not seen this Amen. number 282 as you're turning to number 282 282 to me, two's in there. And uh, Jesus is coming again, and we have some birthdays that are coming again here soon. We have tomorrow, Stacy Nordelos has a birthday. On the 30th, Ted Mitchell. On the 31st, David Klaus. Give him a call this week and encourage him, would you? Encourage him. And Emma Snow on the 31st. And then starting September 1st, starting um, Lincoln Hill has a birthday. Lucas Lathram on the first. David Kim, Kime, excuse me, and Naomi Alm on the first. September the second, Tiffany Hopper, Sharon Landis on the second, Josh Wigan on the second, and on the third we have Mac Tate. Wish all these folks a happy birthday. You see them around today. All right. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. God bless you and keep you the whole year through. Family camp starts this Thursday at four, at 4 o'clock. Registration at 4 o'clock there on the porch. And so please show up. That way we know how many people to feed uh, through this process. And um, this miss around Saturday at noon. So I hope that you can come and disconnect and get away from things for a while. Amen. And leave your phone at home. <laughs> Boy, look at the hands raised. I mean, look at all that. All right, October 1st, we'll have another cleanup day for down at camp, getting ready for the fall and college age retreat. So be put that on your calendar October 1st. All right, continue to pray for the revival, tent revival in South Dakota. Amen. Amen. So remember that. And so how did the revival go in Lebanon, Josh? Give us. It was good. Good. One man saved, a lot of people make commitments. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Planting the seed. Amen. Amen. Number 282 this morning. Jesus is coming again. Marvelous message we bring. Number 282. Marvelous message we bring. Glorious carol we sing. Wonderful word of the King. Jesus is coming again. not going to be a wonderful day for you. 
Did you get saved? Did you get saved? Amen. All right, have a word of prayer with someone today, if you can. And welcome folks to church today. It'd be a blessing to one another. in our scripture reading in Acts chapter 11 this morning. Brother Dan's going to come now and lead us in our scripture reading. In Acts chapter 11 this morning. Good to have all of our visitors with us today. Yeah. 
In Acts chapter 11 this morning, if you would, stand with us this morning reading in reverence of God's Word. Brother Dan, would you come? Thank you. <laughs> and get that guy. Yo. Acts chapter 11 this morning, would you stand please when you find your place there? We'll read responsibly through Acts chapter 11. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it were, had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, call not thou uncommon. Uh, call not thou common. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. And as he, I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as a, on us at the beginning. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that the, with purpose of heart they should cleave unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to, Sar to Tarsus to seek for Saul. And in those days came prophets from Ju G Jerusalem unto Antioch. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt at Judea. Thank you. You may be seated. Hey, thank you, Brother Danny. Take your Bibles to the book of Isaiah. If you want to put the book of Isaiah chapter 12, Isaiah chapter 12. Uh, just in a way of announcements. <clears throat> Uh, in the future this fall, this, uh, we're going to build about 25 foot on that end of the church. We'll probably add about 100 seats and it'll be kind of an uh, elevated platform, kind of match this platform over here. That'll be starting here, uh, I don't know just exactly when, but they're going to be starting at 4-2 off along. And so you folks on that side will be in the cold till they get it done. I'm just lying. 
you'll be just fine. But we are going to build that. Hope, hopefully it'll add about uh, 100 seats to the auditorium. And uh, uh, I'm thankful that we have a problem. Amen? Amen? I'm thankful we have a problem getting everybody seated. But I'm glad for that. We're going to add some more so the Lord can send some more folks here. And uh, hopefully we can just keep preaching the word of God. I, I, Isaiah chapter 12. Is everybody there say amen? amen. Everybody there say amen. All righty. I tell you what, I'm just as happy as I can be. Amen. My body is sore, but my spirit is well. Amen. All righty. Yeah, you got that up on the wall there a little bit, boys, on that song. Did I say songs or Isaiah? What did I say? Well, I think it's Isaiah. It sure ain't songs. All righty. All righty. Isaiah chapter 12. Now, let's pick up here. And we're going to start reading, and the Bible says in that day, but before we start, to back up to chapter 4, 11 just a little bit, I want to give you the context of Isaiah. Now, Isaiah is a prophet of the Lord. So he's going to prophesy, and he's got all, he's a, the book of Isaiah is unbelievable, 66 uh, chapters in Isaiah, and he prophesies, I mean, just almost about everything, both the first coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, so forth. He prophesies a lot about the kingdom. The Bible said in verse 1 of chapter 11, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. Who's Jesse? David's daddy. There shall come forth the out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch, capital B, talking about Jesus, shall grow out of his roots. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. You'll see that uh, quoted and talked about in the New Testament when Jesus, uh, after he's born, when he starts his ministry. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel, might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. By the way, there are seven of those, and that speaks of the seven, um, the seven lights of the candlestick in the tabernacle. And it said, as seven aspects of the Holy Ghost, and shall make him of quick understanding, the fear of the Lord, and shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Talking about Christ now. But he with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the, with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite, watch this, he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Revelation 19. Yep. Coming back on a white horse. All right, the prophecy on that. With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Amen. And the righteousness shall be with the girdle of his loins, faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now watch verse number 6. Everybody there, amen. amen. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. That isn't happening right now. There is coming to this earth a physical, literal kingdom. We call the millennial reign, a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. And that's what he's prophesying here about. During the time of the millennial reign, the thousand year reign is spoken about in Revelation chapter 20. The wolf will lay down with the lamb. The leopard shall lay down with the kid. Talking about a little kid, sheep or goat. Leopard's going to lay down beside. Not going to be killing each other. Watch this. The, and the calf with the young lion. Calf will lay down by a lion. And the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. Going to be a total different world you're going to be living in. Everybody got that? Whole different world you're living in. Watch verse number 7. The cow and the bear shall feed and their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. Has everybody got that? The lion's going to eat like an ox. And there's going to be a different world that you're living in. This is the millennial reign spoken of in Revelation chapter 20 after Christ comes back in power and in glory. The Bible said in verse number 8, And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockroaches' den. And they shall not hurt nor destroy any, in all my holy mountain, for, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now notice in verse number 10, and in the phrase, in that day. In that day. We're talking about the day of the Lord. Second Thessalonians is talking about the day of Christ. A thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years, okay? This is the day of Christ. This is the day of the Lord. This thousand year reign of Jesus Christ on the earth. Now to go back to chapter 12. And uh, just for time's sake, chapter 12 is a praise. It's a system, it's a teaching and instruction to worship God, how to worship God. All right, everybody get your seatbelt buckled this morning, all right? Try not to be distracted if you can keep from it. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. 
Though thou, watch this this morning. If, though thou wast angry with me. The Bible said God is wicked, angry with the wicked every day. Thine anger is turned away and thou comforts me. That's what happened when you got saved. The anger of God was turned away from you and he comforted you with redemption and reconciliation. Verse number two. Now keep in mind here this is a praise and a, a teaching of worship in the kingdom. Behold, God is my salvation. The church is not your salvation. Your living, your good works is not your salvation. Your baptism is not your God is your salvation. Then he said, because of that I will trust and not be afraid. Let me just tell you something. When you get saved, I'm talking about when you get born again in the Spirit of God, God will take the fear of death out of you. God will take the fear of judgment out of you. You trust in Him. God doesn't lie. He'll do what He said He would do. He said, He'll not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Now watch verse number 3. Therefore, because of all this, with joy, Shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation? Amen. Shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation? Because of all that God did for you when he saved you, God says, now as my child, I'm going to give you wells that you can draw from on your journey toward eternity out of these wells of salvation. Now, just before we kick in the message, and say, I'll say, in that day, he has said, in that day, ye shall say, I'm going to give you seven things here that you can do and praise God. Now, I'll tell you, some of you need to get an old Pentecostal shout in you. Some of you need to get out of your rut, amen, amen. and learn how. Now, you say, Reggie, I'm going to tell you something. When in the kingdom, you're going to do this. Amen. In that day, ye shall say, what? Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Let's all say it together, amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Not just saying it to each other, but praise the Lord. Amen. Look, the next thing, call upon his name. The next thing, declare his doings among the people. The next thing, make mention that his name is exalted. The next thing is verse number five, sing unto the Lord. That's why I push singing all the time. Hey, singing is worship. The devil don't want people singing. He wants dead singing. I tell you, I, I like good singing, amen. amen. God likes good singing. Amen. amen. <laughs> Bunch of dead Episcopalians, Amen. That's right. God likes good singing. Amen. amen. Now look what's what he said. For he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Now some of you don't believe your Bible right here, but the next thing he says you'll do is cry out. Yes. Yes. That's right. Cry out. Yes. There, in the Bible, there's prayer and then there's crying out to God. They're two different things. That's right. But they're also, they're, both of them are talking to God, but there's a time when you cry out to God. Peter got on the water out of the boat and he got on the water and he's crying out. He said, Lord, save me. He's crying out, amen. amen. And there's a time when you cry out to God. And then there's a time for this. Look at number seven. What? Shout. Shout. Yeah. You don't believe it? You don't believe it? Yeah. Some of you don't believe it. Oh, yeah, I believe the Bible. Can give her, give her. No, you don't. You never shout. Except shout at your wife. <laughs> shout at the kids. Shout at your husband. But God says, in the kingdom, you're going to cry out and shout. Now, I'm going to tell you something about shouting. Now, you say, I don't like shouting. I had people leave, I've had people leave this church over me preaching this. That's the honest truth. Had a man left, called me up, said, I'm not coming anymore. I, I said, how come? He said, you're preaching on shouting. I don't go for that stuff. I ain't going to be around it. Oh, okay. So you don't want to go to heaven. So you don't want to shout and praise God. But I'll tell you what, the same little stupid, I'm going to tell you, the exact same man, I'm getting in the flesh, the exact same man, you're right, go to a ball game, jump up on the pews, oh, oh, glory, run, run, run. Yeah. Yeah. Come into church, you want to sound like a dead duck. That stuff makes me sick. I believe he makes God sick, amen. I'll tell you, he said, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. See, I'm trying to upset you. I at least want to get your attention. Yes. At least I don't want you sitting there reading your phone. Yes. Amen. I want you to, what's he going to say next? I mean, at least let's do something to get you in here, amen. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. Now, the next thing on God's agenda prophetically is the rapture of the church when Christ takes his bride out of here, amen. amen. And then, uh, and, and what we're seeing right now is the great falling away. We're in it right now. Yeah. America churches are in the great falling away. Yeah. And uh, the Lord's going to come back. 
I've got one ear cut for the trumpet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then the apostate church, which is most of America right now, is going to sail right into the tribulation period thinking that they're the church of God. That's the truth now. God says that in his word. Now what's going to happen when the church is taken out, Israel is going to be returned to spiritual privilege. And whenever the church is taken out, the Old Testament privilege that they had before the church is going to be brought back in. But there's going to be somebody come on the scene. Jesus said, you rejected me, but if another comes in my name, him ye will receive. Yeah. And what's going to happen is because they rejected Christ, and by the way, he said, you reject me. He said, I'll send you, watch me. He said, I'll send you strong delusion yes. that you believe a lie. That's right. That's right. I will tell some of you some morning, some of you are listening online in this church house. You reject Jesus Christ and you do that enough. Pretty soon God will send you strong delusion that he's done with you. And you'll believe garbage and you'll believe a lie and think you're believing the truth. Right. You don't, you don't. You don't mess with God, amen. amen. And so anyway, so they, the Antichrist is going to come on the scene, the man of sin, the son of perdition. He's called the beast. He's going to come on the scene as a world leader. That's why you're seeing, you want to know why we have leadership in America that wants to globalize this country? Because they're getting set for the Antichrist. That's what this is all about. There's a bigger picture, this globalization this denationalization, these open borders, all this garbage is for the globalization to be set up for the coming Antichrist. Now, he's going to make a covenant with Israel in those days. He's going to make a false and temporary peace. And he's going to bring peace and prosperity to this world for a little while. The temple is going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. And for three and a half years, the first of the seven years, it's going to seem like this guy is the dream guy that came on the scene. Yeah. At the middle of the tribulation period, according to Daniel, three and a half years, he will break his covenant with Israel. The temple will have been built, and here's what he's going to do. He's going to walk into the most holy place where the presence of God was to be. He's going to set himself up as God Almighty, 2 Thessalonians says, and he's going to demand that the world worship him. And I want to tell you something, and then he'll make it so that you can't buy nor sell, and you will, watch this, publicly identify with him by having to take the mark of the beast. And I want to tell you something, things are, I mean, buddy, the dominoes are lining up. Everything you're seeing is for absolute worldwide knowledge and control of every human being, everywhere they're at, everything they're doing, everything they're buying, everywhere they're going. It's all becoming and falling in line. I'm going to predict to you, and I'm not a prophet. I'm nobody. God hadn't told me nothing. He ain't telling me nothing beside his word. But according to his word, we are quickly approaching the coming of Jesus Christ. We are quickly approaching the end times of the tribulation period. I'm going to tell you something. You need to get saved. I mean, well, he's going to break that, that covenant and the, and the beast will sit uh, on the, there in the seat proclaiming himself to be God and will be worshipped as God. Now, after that concludes, at the end of that three and a half year period, and when all these plagues hit the earth, the, the Bible said, that I saw heaven open. And him who's got a white horse... And he that set upon it, whose name is faithful and true, and in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ is coming, and he will destroy them with the power, of, with the, uh, the brightness of his glory and his power. And the Bible said Jesus Christ is going to destroy the Antichrist and all of his armies. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ will set up his throne in Jerusalem and he's going to judge this world in, in righteousness and he's going to rule with a rod of iron, the Bible said. Amen. And then he's going to set up his kingdom. And he is going to be king of kings and lord of lords. And the world is going to worship him from one end to the other. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is going to be the one sitting on the throne when this thing's all over. So you say, Reggie, what, that, that is the context of Isaiah chapter 12. Now, I need to shut that fan off because it's blowing my Bible pages over. <laughs> Amen. Any other time, I'd love for that dude to be a blowing. But today, I'm going to shut it off. Now, you say, Reggie, what are you getting into? There is a practical application to every prophecy. Yeah. 
Bible said if you want you love his coming you'll be pure as even as he is pure you purify yourself you don't just look for Jesus come that's not just it it'll cause the purification in your life if you honestly are looking for Christ to come there's a practical application to this the water in Isaiah chapter 12 there as many times in the Bible is a picture of the word of God the Bible okay the drawing of the water. Now, what? Th think about this phrase with me for a minute. Think about it. I'm going to preach a message today that the practical application of this message. And please don't look at my face or anything. I, don't let me don't let me mess you up and me, you not get this. But the practical application of what I'm going to preach to you today has sustained me for 40 years in the ministry. It has sustained me as an individual Christian and it has sustained me as a preacher and the battles and I've had hundreds and hundreds of battles. I want to tell you why I don't get too excited about building projects. Just as sure as we knock a hole in that wall and put a hundred next to the seat, there'll be 50 of you leave. That's right. You know what I'll do then? I'll pull a curtain across that. Amen. Till we need it. Amen. We'll have it when we need it. But what I'm saying is I've been through a lot of battles. I've been through a lot of storms. And I'm going to tell you, there's something that will sustain you as a Christian. I'm telling you, and it is the wells, of plural, of salvation. The wells of salvation. The drawing of the water of wells. Now, we don't do this anymore. We do that and we got water. How many know seen the old time well buckets? How many know what an old time well bucket is? Now, they had two different ones. You had the old wooden bucket. They had the pulley up there. And you, and you took the rope and down it went, right? And it went, glug, 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 glug. And you pulled a little bit and you filled with water in it. You pulled the water up and you got water. But you know what? It didn't come up all by itself. Right. Right. Hang with me. Then you had the old time casing well. The old well bucket about that long, about that big round, had a little top. And you stick that sucker down them, them small wells like that. And it'd do the same thing. Glug, 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 glug. And you pulled up. That thing would lock the bottom. It plugged the bottom and you pulled. The, how many's ever pulled one of those? Oh, we still got a few saints. Amen. Anyway, and you pull that dude up and you put get it and you pull that little thing right there and out of water would go out. Amen. I, I can remember hauling hay. Amen, Paul. And I tell you what, I mean hay everywhere. I mean hot, hot, hot. And get you in a well bucket and have somebody pull the plug. That's more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Amen. That water just fall all over you and just running everywhere off of you. And I tell you what, it feels good. Amen. And that's what he's talking about. You draw water out of the well of salvation. Now Abraham dug wells. You go back in Genesis, Abraham's all the time drink. Everywhere he went, he did he dig, dig a well, Brother Dennis. And then here come Isaac and he had dig a well. And here comes Jacob and they dig a well. And then they got the well that, watch this, I preach a message on this. Drawn water out of the wells your daddy dug. You got to be careful about, you kids, listen to me, be careful. Now I'm just going to go on past this and we'll say something good. You be careful about only drawing water out of the wells your daddy dug. Because the wells your daddy dug, if you're not careful, you're going to be someplace where you can't get to a well your daddy dug. You're going to need to, you're going to need to dig some wells of your own someday. But God has wells scattered for you for your journey of life. Yes. Now, if Jacob, as I said, did that, you draw that. Well, it takes work. Now, salvation's free. Amen. The well of salvation, the well, period, singular, is free. But the wells of salvation take work. Yeah. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Listen, it takes effort. That means you've got to go after the water. There are two in that passage of Scripture is phrases that says, in that day. The first in that day is speaking of your eternal salvation in Jesus Christ. That well is, and by the way, John chapter, put up John chapter 4 if, if you don't care. And verse number 4, it's got the other one, is the daily salvation that God gives you on your journey through this life. Amen. Now the Bible says something. It says with a sour spirit, Judah, draw water out of the well of salvation. What? What's your Bible say? With joy. Here's where I have trouble. If I'm not careful, Danny, I'm trying to draw water out of the wells of God with a bad spirit. Amen. I'm not doing it with joy. I'm doing it complaining. I'm doing it grabbing. I'm telling you what, devil tried everything in the world to get to me this morning. I mean, you ask my wife, honey, what have I been for the last 25, 24 hours? Be honest. <laughs> You love me too much to tell people, don't you? She ain't saying nothing. 
Her favorite verse is the women keep silence in church. <laughs> She's a smart woman, I tell you. I ain't been nothing but a gripey, murmuring, complaining. And Brother Michael, all week long, I've known I'm going to preach this message. And it just seemed like everything that was going on made me, I'm just griping and groaning and murmuring and complaining. And the devil would say, come on, draw with joy out of the water of the well. Come on, joy. Yeah, get up there Sunday morning and tell them all about how joyful you've yeah. been at the house. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'm going to tell you, but you know what? We live by faith. Danny, thank you this morning. We don't live by performance. And I don't care how bad it's gotten. I don't care how sorry I am. I'm still going to draw water out of the well of salvation with joy in my soul. Amen. I would tell you the joy of the Lord is our strength, the Bible teaches us. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to go to a church and I don't want a religion or Christianity that is joyless. Amen. I don't want no, I don't want this sour juice. Looks like you've been eating. How many's ever ate green persimmons? <laughs> If you ain't ever ate green persimmons, you in for a treat. We had a church party one time. I'm just going to tell this. We had a church party one time, brother. And a guy in our church, it was fall, it was October, and the persimmons were still green. And he took those green persimmons and he took chocolate. He melted chocolate and dipped those green persimmons and covered them with chocolate. And he brought them to the church party, amen, hay riding party. And man, them little old kids run over there and they said, boy, what's that? He said, them chocolates, chocolate persimmons. Oh boy, they grabbed down their bite right like that and they'd take a big bite. I mean, their face would go up. That reminds me of some church folk, amen? I don't tell you something, I ain't going to no church where it's like that. I ain't going. I ain't, let, I ain't letting it happen, amen. We're going to laugh a little bit in here. We're going to have some joy in here. We're going to have some cheer in here. Yes, we're going to cry. Yes, we're going to mourn. Yes, we're going to be, be heartbroken. But we're going to be joyous in the Lord, amen. amen. And so I'm saying, he said, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. I don't, I don't want no green persimmon religion, amen. I don't tell you, joy is the fruit of the Spirit. The joy of the Lord is our strength. 103 times in the Old Testament, the Bible speaks of joy and rejoicing. 62 times in the New Testament. The Bible speaks about great joy, shouting joy, exceeding joy, uh, singing joy, reaping joy, chief joy, full joy, all the joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. I mean, you get so joyful, you can't tell nobody all about it. And believe it or not, in Jeremiah, it talks about skipping joy. How many of you can skip? I'm 68 and I can skip. Amen. I'll tell you, don't ever, if you never learned how to skip, why don't you practice it this week? Amen. You ought to learn how to skip. Oh, I know some of you are going to. I want to tell you, something. these two little kids right here in the front, did anybody beside me see them come into church today? Did anybody beside me see them come into church? Now their mom and daddy, they're back here dragging behind 60 feet. But here come them little bitty kids. I said, bless God Almighty, that's why everybody ought to come to church, amen. Everybody ought to come to church with a little hop in your door, amen. And come and drag it in. Come, come singing time. I think they're, I think they're off tune, don't you, honey? Why don't you sing off tune so you can't hear somebody else's off tune? Yeah, some of you been eating persimmons. I can see it on your face. Amen. You know what it is to have the joy of the Lord. This is what God says. I would tell you something. When my kids was growing up, if they came downstairs and had a, a smirk or a, a sour look on their face, I figured something's wrong with them. You listen to me. When your heavenly Father watched you get up, you got a sour look on you, and you act like you're, you, you're you live in America. You ought to be shouting and smiling. Amen. Thank God, Amen. Amen. I tell you what, you ought to be happy in the Lord, Amen. I don't care. Now I know you got to fight it. How many here has to fight it like me? Okay. Got to fight it, Amen. But you know what you can do? You can make up your mind. I am not going to live that way by the grace of God Almighty. Amen. I'm telling you right now, we need to have the joy of the Lord. The Apostle Paul and Silas, they got arrested. They got thrown in jail, Brother Josh. They beat their backs. They laid their backs open. They put them in stocks. Is there no night about midnight? Blood coming out their ears. Blood down their nose. Backs beat all up. 
sitting in stocks, couldn't move. And Paul looked over at Silas and said, it's your fault. We wouldn't be here if you hadn't started this preaching business. <laughs> Silas said, no, it wasn't my fault, it's your fault. Paul said, we're having a church split right here, I'll just tell you. <laughs> you go to your church and I'll go to mine. Yeah. <laughs> what did they do? Hey, they're singing. Paul said, what do you think, Silas? Well, I think I'm going to count it a blessing to suffer for Jesus' sake. Yes. And you know what they did? The Bible said they praised God and they sung. And old Silas struck up, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch. I believe he put his hands up toward heaven and said, God, I thank you that you counted us worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ for sake. And do you know what God did? God shook that jail. That's where Elvis Presley got his song, Jailhouse Rock. Yeah. Some of you don't even know who Elvis is anymore, do you? <laughs> Amen. And the jailhouse busted loose and they come out of their deals. Why? Because they had a joyful spirit in the midst of their persecution and their trouble and their sorrow. Amen. Things might turn out different for you if you quit griping and murmuring and complaining. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, 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 we're having a good time. Amen, aren't we? Amen. Well, the reason folks are so depressed and worried and confused and ignorant and discouraged, they've been drinking from the devil's cesspool. Right. Old brother L.T. Hopper told me one time about two men that got drunk one night. They'd been out and partying and went down. They got, got this little moonshine. See, back years ago, we couldn't buy no beer. We had to drink moonshine. <laughs> You're... You are the deadest bunch. I never, you are the deadest bunch. How many knows what moonshine is even? Some of you don't know what moonshine is. Moonshine is corn liquor. You make it with acorns. <laughs> Woo! That'll knock you out. They used to call it knock them out, John. You drink two drinks and you're out. Amen. Anyway, there's drunken. And there's going down the road, and there's a staggering, and there's a mud hole. But the old boy kept, he'd been saying, man, I'm thirsty. Man, I'm thirsty. He saw a mud hole. He fell down. And his old partner said, now you are thirsty. I'm going to tell you what's your trouble. You listen to me? You know why you don't have no more joy than you got? Because you're drinking out of the devil's cesspool. You're drinking out of that phone every day. You're drinking out of that TV every day. You're drinking out of that radio every day. You're drinking. It's no, I, I'd be like them liberals too if I drunk out of their garbage cesspool. I'm going to tell you something right now. Brother Lonnie, this preacher, I am not going to a sewer lagoon for a drink of water. Amen. Oh, I know some of you. You just can't wait for Garth Brooks to get down to Branson. Oh, man. You just can't wait for Garth Brooks to get to Bra Branson. Got your tickets already bought up, and old Garth's gonna come in there, and you're gonna go. I love that sewer lagoon stuff. Yeah. Amen. 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 You're drinking out of rock and roll, you're drinking out of country and western. Ain't no wonder you can't shout on Sunday morning. You're drinking out of contemporary Christian, and you woohoo. And your woo-hoo is what got the substitute for your joy. Yeah. You got the woo-hoos. Well, let me tell you about the Bible. I'm almost through the introduction. And Don Zinn's going to have to suffer. Every time I think I'm going to shut, shut, quit preaching, I look at Don Zinn and say, five more minutes. Five more minutes. No, I don't. The Bible said that Jesus had joy in planning our salvation, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame and set down at the right hand of the Father. The Bible said Jesus has joy in procuring our salvation. He went after that lost sheep and said, Rejoice with me, for that which is lost is found. The Bible said there's joy in proclaiming our salvation. Did you know what makes us shout in heaven? The Bible said there's rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. You boys went up at 11 this week, there's one soul saved, as far as you know, right? 
I'm going to tell you what happened. More, something more important happened than all the news was across the world this week. When heaven got news that that man got saved, I tell you, heaven rejoiced because somebody got saved. There's joy in proclaiming the, the salvation of the soul. And then the Bible teaches us, and this is what I'm going to preach on, in the provision of our salvation. God has given us wealth along the journey. Now let me just tell you something. I want to get going. We'll get out of here. Number one, the Bible teaches about the well of salvation. I was traveling along life in old desert spit life of sin and wickedness. I won't tell you I had hair down my shoulders. I was listening to country west and I was living a sinful life. I was enjoying the prosperity and the pleasure. I had a white Corvette and a black Harley David motorcycle hair down on my shoulders. And I was chasing the women and the money. And I want to tell you right now, it's just like Moses said. Pleasure is a sinner, but for a season. And I want to tell you something one day. I'm thankful God sent Holy Ghost conviction to my life. I'm thankful God sent the message of judgment. And I heard how Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that someday I was going to have to, was appointed unto men, wants to die, and after this, the judgment. I'm glad I heard that God so loved me that he sent his Son to be a sacrifice for my sin. I'm glad that I heard here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his Son to be the perpetuation for our sin. I'm so glad that I heard Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastised my peace upon him. I'm glad I heard 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18, where it says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the spirit, but uh, quickened by, but being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. I'm glad I heard the gospel one day. And let me tell you what I did. Brother Ralph, I came to God and I throwed up the white flag of surrender and I throwed up the, well, the hand of repentance. And I said, God, I'm a guilty sinner headed to hell. I've been at war with you all my life. And God, you have conquered my soul. And I trust in your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, would you have mercy upon me and save me through the man and the blood of your son that was crucified for me. And I'm going to tell you something, what? I got a drink from the well, and you look up here. Uh, get up John chapter 4. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. This well is in you forever, and it's an everlasting spring of water. He, whoa, look at here. He must needs go through Samaria. Whoa! I'm glad God said I must needs go through the Ozarks. Amen. I'm glad God said I must needs go through Norwood, Missouri. Amen. I'll tell you something. God says I must needs go through your heart today. He said he cometh to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, the parcel ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now what? Jacob's what was there? Well. well. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with the journey, sat thus on the well, and it's about the sixth hour. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to drink water. And Jesus said, and her, give me to drink. And said, the disciples gone. Verse number nine. Then said the woman of Samaria to him, how is it thou ask me, being a Jew, ask to drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, if thou knewest the gift of God, Amen. salvation is a gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He said, thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, give me to drink. Thou wouldest ask of him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water. You want to know what sustained me for 40 years in preaching? It's living water. Living water. Living water. I'm not drinking out of a pond. I'm not drinking out of a ditch. I'm not drinking out of a cesspool. I'm drinking out of the living water of God's word. Amen. I want to tell you what he, what he said. The woman said to him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well's deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Abraham, Jacob, which gave us a well, and drank there of himself and his children's cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water, that well here, he said, he's going to thirst again. Watch this. Watch this. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give in him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Glory to God. That's what I took a drink of, Brother Paul, on January the 24th, 1982. I'll tell you, the Savior reached down and he gave me that everlasting water. I'm going to ask you this morning, do you have that water in you? Do you have that water in you? Spring it up, spring it up, spring it up, an everlasting well of water inside you. Amen. That's what will sustain you. Yes. And I didn't draw that well. He did. I want to ask you, do you have that well of water springing up? I'll tell you what, I like that word springing up. Amen. I like that word springing up. 
I don't, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm some goofball, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, anything as big as God moves in and big as the devil moves out, there, what, something's going to happen inside you, amen? And I want to tell you, I don't care how sorry you may be and how low down you may be, but I want to tell you that living water will be inside you, a well of water springing up. I'm sick to death, America's dead, Christianity. And people, you, by the way, your kids are sick to death of dead Christianity. I want to tell you what's, what's, what you say, what's wrong with this country is we do not have the water of life. We've got a substitute, and it's not springing up. Amen. 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 It's no wonder he said they'd cry out and shout and proclaim the name of the Lord. Have a big time. Amen. I don't know. You know what? This altar's open any time, and if you want to walk the back of them pews, I don't care. Help yourself. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. Now, don't you put on a show, but I want to tell you this much. Somebody ought to be happy about the everlasting water of God. He said, be in your well of water springing up. Eternal life, amen. You know, I'll tell you what some of you need to do, what she said. That woman saith unto him, sir, what? And give me this water. <laughs> now, there's not nor near come to draw. I'm going to tell you what she did. That woman had all kinds of bat rough background, amen. She had all kinds of marital problems, but God saved her, amen. You say, Reggie, what are you going on with? I'm talking about, I'm talking about the fact that God can save you. Now, I got saved January 24th, 1982. And I'm going to tell you what. Did you know that you get saved on a hill? You always get saved on a hill. You, never, you can't get saved without the, the hill called Calvary. That's right. And I got saved on a hill. And I tell you what, I got saved. I was laying out of church that night, and I tell you what, I was just so happy. I was so clean. I, was so, I, was so, I just felt so good. Amen. I tell you what, I mean, God had cleaned this up. I mean, you're talking about feeling right. I mean, they were, and I was a hopping along, boy. I was just happy. Oh, good grief of life. Amen. I fell smack into a mud hole. A mud hole of sin. And I'll tell you what, I raised my head up and I said, good grief of life. I thought I got saved. Man, surely, man, saved man can't sin, can he? Easy now. Huh? Easy, yeah. Well, how did I get here? And then you know what it did? Now you watch me. I, I was in that mud hole sin. And I started looking around to see if anybody saw me. Make sure nobody, I don't see anybody, so I started cleaning myself up and rubbing the mud off of me and trying to make sure I looked presentable by Sunday. Yeah. And I tried to get the mud off of me. And the best I could tell, nobody saw me. But then I looked up. God saw me. Now something convicted me inside. Some said things ain't right. Somebody said, Bridget, what mud hole sin you fall in? I ain't telling you. Ain't none of your business. <laughs> oh, really? Some of you so dry, you're going to blow away with a Kansas wind. And I said, Lord, I thought it got saved. I fell in a mud hole of sin. What I do? And the Lord said, you better get you a well. <laughs> and so I run to the well. And I got to dawn on that well, and you know what I found? First John 1 9 said that if we Christians confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unright. And bless God, when I confessed it to him, he cleansed me, and I jumped up and said, Bless God, I'm going to get out of that mud hole. Hey, mud hole, I used to like you. I used to waller in you. Yeah. Hey, to water and you no more, amen. And I want to be clean. You, some of you today, you know what's your problem? You why you can't shout? You know why you ain't got no joy? It's because you fell in the mud hole of sin and you rationalize it and you justify it and you blame it and you think you're trying to hide it from everybody, but God sees it and there ain't gonna be no joy in your heart till you get dealt with it. Well, I'll tell you what. I got to that well of confession. The Bible said in Proverbs said, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, he, but he that confesseth and forsaketh his sins shall have mercy. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you've got sin in your life, you just need to get that old well of confession and get it right with God and tell him. Well, I got all cleaned up, amen. And I was heading down the road and heading down the trail of life and I learned how to deal with sin. Sin, you confess it, get it right with God, be honest with God about it. And I come around a bend and it was dark and a lot of shadows in that little old roadway. And I heard this old voice, kind of a grating voice. <laughs> and this grating voice said, you're not saved. You didn't really get saved. 
And I said, well, I thought I did. No, you can't know you're saved. No. You can't really know. You won't know till you die what's going to happen, really. That old grading voice kept whispering that junk in me. And I said, well, I thought I was pretty sure I got saved. Just, just right sure I got saved. No, no, no. You're not really saved. You can't really know. You won't, never, you won't be saved until after you die. You don't really know anything. Anybody ever been, everybody, anybody hadn't met that fella before on the road? Oh, yeah, he's out there on the road. He'd be, be meeting all the time. And I said, God, I, I, I don't know, Lord. I thought I got saved there. I was pretty sure about that, Lord. What, what did I do? And he said, son, you better look for a well. So I started looking for a well. Guess what I found? I tell you, I dropped that old bucket. They went, go, 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 go. I said, I got some good water. Something to be like. I pulled it up to 1 John chapter 5. And it said, this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And he said, this life is in his son. And he said, it's not in you, Reggie. It's in his son. And he said, this he that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. And he said, these things, watch it. These things have I written unto you that believe upon the name of the son of God. That you may know, amen, that you have eternal life. Not that you may wonder, not that you may hope when you die, but that you may know that you have present potence, present tense possession, eternal life. I said, you ain't nothing but a stinking liar. Get out of here. Amen. And that's what you got to do. You got to get to the well, amen, and find out. I'm telling you right now, well, I, I, you know what he, I asked him a few questions though before I went to well. I said, well, wh- wh- what do you got? How, how, I thought I saved, uh, but, but, but. And he said, well, now listen, you watch it. He said, you know, you, you, you can't know you're saved. You got to live it. Uh-uh. I said, I got to live it? He said, yeah, you got to live it. I said, well, would you tell me how to live it? Well, he said, be real religious and be real self-righteous and get baptized and dress right and be at church about every time the doors is open and he said to impress everybody and, and, and talk surficially and that'll be a living it I said but what if I don't live it he said well you'll die and go to hell <laughs> some of you smile a little, little bit amen Bless your heart. You got just a, how many, you, you know, some of you, you'd think your joy was in the iodine bottle. Here's a little drop. <laughs> hey, God's got oceans of joy for you, amen. He ain't dispensing it out with the iodine deal. That's right. Amen. Well, I said, I said, what, how, I said well, how am I going to know when I'm living it? He said, well, first of all, you need to start redefining sin yeah. and, and figure out that anything you do is not really sin. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, I tell you what I did, man. I sat down. I was defeated and discouraged and dismayed and despaired. And you know what I said? I think I just will quit now because I don't think I can ever live it. I said, well, how many, how many sins have I got to commit before I lose it? He said, just one. <laughs> just one. Well, I said, which one is it? He said, hey, nobody can really know. <laughs> well, how many times you got to commit it before you lose it? Well, nobody quite knows. God is a cruel God. Doesn't want you to know whether you're saved. I want you to be tormented all the way to glory. Put on the put up on the screen John 5 24. Barely, barely. Anybody know what that means? It means he ain't lying. It means he means it. I say unto you, Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath ever lasting life. Watch this. Watch this. And shall not come into condemnation. Anybody believe that here? But is passed from death unto life. Now I'll tell you something. If you've ever been born again in the Spirit of God, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Put up John 3.16. Nobody seems to really know this verse. They all quote it. Nobody believes it. John 3.16, if you can, boys. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have something. What are you going to have? Everlasting life. I don't need Bill Clinton to define that for me. Amen. I don't know why I'm after Bill today, but I am. Amen. Go to John 10.27. 
John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Amen. And I give unto them. You didn't buy it. You didn't purchase it. You didn't merit it. You didn't earn it. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. And what's the verse number 31? The Jews took up stones to stone him. And there were people all over Missouri. They'll stone you with a stone. You say you got eternal life. Amen. They'll stone you with their religious rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Take that devil, amen. amen. Take that devil, that's the truth, amen. I want to tell you something. Listen, I, I'll tell you what I did. And I got those verses, and I found out the name of that well. After I got past it, I turned around and looked at it and said, Well of Assurance. <laughs> I can have assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase, purchase of God. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. What do you ever get a drink from that well of assurance? You'll never be the same in your life. Amen. I've never been the same since I got the drink of that well of assurance. Yes. I'll tell you something else it'll do. It'll put the skipping joy in you. Amen. It'll give you joy, amen, knowing it's not up to you. It's up to God Almighty. Well, I tell you what, I jumped up from that well of assurance and I was hepping on down the road and thought, bless God, this is getting better and better, amen. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. And I looked around the corner and brother... There's a man standing there with a backpack on his back. And I said, well, howdy. He said, how you doing, Reg? I said, you know me? Yeah. He said, I'm a cent for you. I said, what are you packing? He said, it's for you. I said, what is it? He turned around, Brett, and he said, preach. I said, wait a minute, you got the wrong guy. That's right. You got the wrong guy. Not only you got the wrong guy, you got the wrong want to guy. It's got to want to either. Yeah. No. He said, your heavenly father sent me down here to put this burden on you. Amen. He's called you to preach. Thank you. I said, God, I can't. He said, God knows that. <laughs> he said, turn around. I turned around. He put that pack on my back, Danny. And I'm going to tell you what it did. Drove me to my knees. I said, God, I can't. And the Holy Spirit said, You better get you a well and you better get you one fast. Amen. And I found it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9, where he said, My grace Amen. is sufficient for thee. Yes. I found it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where he said, Not many mighty, not many noble. Not many wise according to this world. For God has chosen the foolish things of this world. And through the foolishness of preaching men to be saved. I found another well. He said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want to tell you, preacher, something. God called you to preach. You better get to a well in the deep and fast. You better drink from that well of assurance. You better drink from that well of God's power and God's accompaniment, God's strength for what he calls you to do in life. <clears throat> well, God's grace was sufficient. I started preaching. I started preaching the Bible. I, I didn't go get somebody's three point in the form from the denomination. I just opened the Bible and started preaching. And I started preaching, and I was preaching one Sunday, and all of a sudden I noticed somebody, brother, looking at me funny. Oh, and when them women starts giving you that look, <laughs> it's fun, amen. <laughs> I 
I found out everybody didn't like what preaching. And then I found out Danny, they'd be waiting for you to, out just outside the church house door. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you, Brother Edge, for a little bit. I'll tell you something. You don't need to be preaching on that. And having that around here. You understand? <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I take orders from you, not God. <laughs> I was preaching on abortion. Just even mentioned it through a deal. And a state representative that was sitting in the, in the congregation <laughs> caught me at the back door. He said, I don't let, you don't be preaching on abortion at this church. I looked at him, I said, you know something? I know you. My dad served in the legislature with you. He knew you was a sellout then. You're still a sellout now. You're sitting in this church acting like you're a Christian. And I preached on abortion. You're going to tell me what I can preach? I said, don't you ever in your life again tell me what I'm going to preach or what I'm not going to preach. I ain't putting up with it. I ain't putting up with it. And I'll tell you something right now. I said, your biggest problem is you're a Democrat. <laughs> God, but I want to tell you something. And the more I preach, the meaner the looks got. And the more the control started coming. And God said, Reg, you better get to a well. And I went to a well and I found it. The fear of man bringeth a snare. The Bible said, God gave me a well that's so deep has taken me through 40 years of preaching. He said, fear not. Fear not, Reggie, for I'm with thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, for I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded, and they who strive with thee shall be as nothing. In Luke chapter 12, verse, I found another voice fell on him. He said, Fear not them which can kill the body and have no more after that they can do. But he said, I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast both soul and body into hell. And I made up my mind, brother, that I wasn't going to fear nobody but God Almighty. I wasn't going to fear my wife. I wasn't going to fear my kids. I wasn't going to fear my daddy. Said, my daddy sat right where you're sitting at for 35 years in this church. And I'm going to tell you something. My dad and I didn't agree with that, but he never tried to intimidate me with fear. Ever. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I... Besides God Almighty, I bless my dad's name in the memory of him. Amen. Because he knew what I was talking about. Yes. And you better get you a well. And get rid of the fear of man. Amen. Oh, Danny, I got to preaching. And I got on down the road and this ugly guy, <coughs> this ugly guy came out of the bushes at me. Uh -oh. I said, what's your name? He said, my name's Mr. Comparison. I said, Mr. Comparison? Yes. He said, you're supposed to compare yourself to everybody. Yeah. I said, compare myself to everybody? He said, yes. Don't you know that's how you get along through life is by comparing yourself to everybody? So I said, well, okay, whatever you say, that's what I'll do. And I just started comparing myself to that preacher and this preacher and that preacher and this preacher and that guy and this guy. And I, I compared my neighbor what his land was and his farm and his car. I'd drive up in the church, compared my truck against theirs, and it didn't look very good. <laughs> Amen. And you know what I found out, Brother Glidden? I was either full of pride or I was discouraged to death. And the Bible said this, and the Lord said, you better get you a well to take care of that. And the found it. It said, it said, comparing yourselves among yourselves, you are not wise. Amen. I'll tell you what you do. You be who you are. Amen. You be who you are. I'm talking about, listen, and I got on down the road and somebody rejected me. Oh. Isn't that the awful pain in life when somebody rejects you? And I looked for a well and it said he was despised and rejected. Amen. And I got down the road and somebody hated me. I hate you. Jesus said they hated me before they hated you. And I got on down the road and I couldn't pay a bill one day. Didn't have enough money to make more bills than there was money. Anybody ever been there before? And well, I said, Lord, I need a well. And he said, I'll give you one. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. And I found another well on that. And he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And then I got on down the road of life and I lost some friends and family. I said, my goodness sakes alive. And, I read, and then God said, you better go get your well. And I said, I will, Lord, I'm digging for a well. And it said, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Are y'all getting this message that everything you're ever going to run into, there's a well for you to dig. But you're going to have to dig it out. 
I got on down the road and there was some griefs and some sorrows and some heartache that hurt me so bad I couldn't hardly talk to nobody about it. And even to this day, I'll be out working and that grief will hit me. And I'll tell you what, it is about to take you down. But I was reading Isaiah 53 one day. He said, surely he hath buried, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to have to let you bear this grief. And I'm just going to have to let you carry these sorrows. Then you get on down the road of life and you're going to find out you may run into a little narrow trail called loneliness. And it just seemed like, but I want to tell you what you'll find. You dig a well there and you draw on that well and you'll find out there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There's a friend that will never leave you nor forsake you. And the old preacher said, well, I'm preaching on wells. <laughs> and you get down in a little bit of suffering. Get cussed out and get threatened. I'm getting used to it. Amen. I, I used to, I'd look at it on the Facebook comments and messages they'd send me. I'd get mad at them. But now I'm like, ah, you know, let it go. But I'll tell you what, I found a well for it. If you suffer for Jesus' sake, kind of rejoice in that you're kind of worthy to suffer reproach for his name. I want you to put up uh, Psalms 42, Brother Joel. Would you put up Psalms 42? How many has ever been on your Christian journey and you got discouraged? Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, you can hit a ditch called discouragement. And I mean to tell you what, man, I believe I talked to you back in the summer and you was discouraged one day. Now I don't blame you. Hey, listen, it's not that you, getting discouraged is not the problem. It's not coming, it's not coming out of it. Yeah. It's in that valley of discouragement that some good corn grows in your soul. But you got to get out of there eventually. All right? I want you to look at this. I don't want you to ever forget this chapter. This is where I go when I need encouragement. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall, that come, shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Now I want to show you something. I want you to notice holy day. We might say that's Sunday today. I caution in saying this. But sometimes your roughest times in life be right after you've had a wonderful service. Right after you've had a great blessing. Because watch what happens. He said, I went with them with a voice of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept holding day. Now what? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts, and all thy ways and thy billows are gone over me. Now here's something you need to get. You see that it said, whose waves and whose billows? Whose? God's ways and God's billows. You listen to me. Get this. It'll help you through your discouragement. You need to realize the Bible uses the sea in terminology how a wave will come over your soul and you think you're going down, you don't know where you're going to come up again. David recognized something we, not, we need that for the child of God, it's God's waves and it's God's billows. Uh, Danny, forgive me. I hope you'll forgive me. But I watched the, willow, the waves and the billows go over you. I said to Karen a time or two, I don't know whether he's going to make it or not. And it's because I knew him so well. Some of you, I don't know you well enough to know when the waves and the billows are going over you. But you know when they are. Yes. And David was there. But if you remember that it's God's waves and God's billows, He's not going to let you drown. Yet, the Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer in the God of my life. 
I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Do you see where he's at? Lord, you've forgotten about me. He asked himself a question. Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? And then he says it again. Here it is, the second time in this chapter. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Actually, chapter 43 says that again. Before I close, I want to tell you about a couple of three others. What's bad is when you've been preaching and you've seen God work and you've seen God's sustaining power and you've seen God's grace and you've seen thousands of answered prayers. But you're going down the road and Brother Jim, out of a briar, out of the briars, comes an ugly, ugly old man. And he steps out in the road in front of you on your Christian journey and he says, and you say, who are you? He said, I'm a devil. I want you to listen to me. I'm a devil and my name is unbelief. You've lived your life in vain. Bible's man written book. There is no God. It's dying dirt. In the face of being around the presence and power and the spirit of Almighty God and seeing God work in people's lives and in my own life. Did you know that that devil, Brother Ralph, named unbelief, will jump out and road in front of me? There ain't no God. It's not real. He's a nasty demon. And I tell you, I just looked up and I said, God, I've got thoughts going through my mind crazy. Thoughts going through my mind that you don't exist. That the Bible's just a joke, that there is no afterlife. That there's no judgment, there's no... Brother Dean, that sweet, sweet voice of the Holy Spirit say, you better get your will, bud. Son, you better get to a well. And I go to Romans chapter 4. And I hear Abraham say, Who against hope believed in hope. Amen. When he couldn't see any hope, when he couldn't see anything to, to lay a hold of, he just believed. And the Bible said this, watch it, that he staggered not at the promises of God. I want to tell you, beloved, something this morning. God promised you, if you put your faith and trust in his son, he promised you eternal life. Amen. Don't stagger at it. Because I'll tell you something right now. If he can, if he can throw that deal at you, he just gets you so beat up. You don't know whether you're coming or going. You've got to watch that thing. You better get to a well. I could take you to a lot of wells on that. The whole book of Hebrews, the whole chapter of Hebrews chapter 11, and on and on it goes. You say, Reggie, I, I ain't going to preach all I could preach, but I will say this. I've gotten down the road and be troubled, bewildered, confused. And God, what's going on? Now, I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I don't want you to think that. But I'm trying to relate to you the realities of serving the Lord and walking with God. I found a well one day and it said let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I read and I found a well that said but God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I found this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, he said with joy, 
And I want to say something to you, and I, I think I've messed message up pretty good because I've been snotting and crying most of the message. <laughs> and the Bible said, therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of life. And I want you to know something. That in the quietness of my life, it has been with joy. Amen. What I'm this morning going through my soul is, is that brokenness before God. That, that there's joy, actually. Amen. How good God's been to me and given me wells. Yes. Now, I know some of you don't think this, but several years down the road, I'm probably going to get old. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, the thought came to me, I might get old. <laughs> you ain't saying I'm old, are you? <laughs> but I, I found a well. When I get there, I ain't old, don't you say I'm old. <laughs> Some of you grinning like, Reggie, we have mercy upon you. you don't, you're old and don't know it. <laughs> Y'all are already senile. I want, you, I want you to listen to this well I found. It's in Isaiah 46, 4. And even to your old age, Amen. I am he. And even to whore hairs, little Wyatt, Karen, <laughs> even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and we'll deliver you. Amen. God says, Reggie, Amen. I got a well out in front of you for when you get old. All right. I said, well, Lord, I might get old, but I said, what about dying? <laughs> if you don't come back first, I might have to die. He said, you might want to get you a well. So I went to Psalms 23. He said, yay, do I walk through don't you like that? I love this. Yea, though I, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. So I got a well for when I die. And then I said, but now, Lord, would it be too much if I ask you about a well for judgment? <laughs> said, no, he said, you can die. He said, just, just go, go after when I went. I found one. It's in Romans chapter 4. Because I've really prayed about this. Of all the stuff I've preached today, it's like, Lord, where's the well about that I'm going to need at judgment? I said, Lord, I don't want, I'm not going to ask nobody. I want you to tell me, where's the well? Show me the water. He took me to Romans chapter 4. And here's what it said. David saith, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. <laughs> I got a well for judgment. Amen. My sins are on him. Amen. Who his own self bear my sin in his own body on the tree. Amen. I got a well for it all. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. It's 1217. Now some of you preachers are going to have somebody like Don Zinn in your congregation who will be looking at the <laughs> clock all the time. This is the honest truth. I used to go with an old boy, and he was a great old guy. But if the preacher went past noon, there was a big old, how many seen them big old round clocks at the back of the church? I always wonder why they didn't put them in the front. Put them in the back so the preacher could see it all the time, right? And if it got to be at one minute after noon, Don, this is what he would do so you can start doing this. He would look at his watch first. Then he would turn around in his seat to that clock and go, listen. <laughs> How'd you like to be preaching on a deal like that? <laughs> Y'all dismissed. Go draw some water, amen? I love you. See you later. Appreciate you.